Um, well, unfortunately, I, I've been on your show twice in recent weeks about strikes in the civil service. Uh, we've been seeing strikes now since December, including two national walkouts of over 130,000 people across 130 different government departments. But unfortunately, since I've been on your show, Kay, I can tell you there has not been one minute of negotiations with the government or their representatives. And therefore, this strike is a significant escalation because the government's own workforce are living in in-work poverty, 40,000 using food banks, 45,000 claiming in-work benefits, and now an estimated 60 to 70,000 on the national minimum wage because of pay cuts in the last decade. And if the government can talk to the health service, and I'm glad they did, to teachers, and I'm glad they did, to firefighters, and I'm glad they did, surely the question must be asked, why are we now seeing this level of strikes and still the government will not pick up the phone and have a single minute of talks to avert this disruption? Maybe it's because the government says that um, the strike is not going to have any impact on people uh, wanting to apply for a new passport and they're not changing uh, their guidance and advice which says uh, wait 10 weeks for a passport. Well, they, they may be saying that. Uh, I, I think even if that's what was the case, and we will see, we don't believe that will be the case, it's still frankly astonishing that the government, who knows its own workers, are claiming benefits and using food banks and delivering frontline services, are getting a 2% pay award when food inflation is 18%. And as the piece you've just done, people are facing a cost of living crisis. The reality is today, OK, what we're going to see is every passport in the UK, every passport office, there are 1,900 staff directly involved in decision-making on new passports, renewal applications, and sitting on reception areas. Of those, 1,600 will be on strike. That's about 85% of the workers involved. So it's inevitable that delays will increase, queues will increase. In fact, we saw queues outside offices when strikes were announced, let alone when they have started. And all of this, the government knew was coming. I contacted them three weeks ago, and yet, there's absolute radio silence. I've been sitting by the phone, I'm sitting here waiting today for Jeremy Quinn or any government minister to say, let's have the same type of talks we've had elsewhere. And if they don't do that, Kay, I'm, I'm sad to say that we won't just see five weeks of strikes in the passport offices. In the next two weeks, you'll see the British Library closed. You'll see the British Museum closed. You'll see more strikes in the Department for Transport, including driving examiners, and it goes on and on. Okay. Why? Um, because the government is home. not. Sorry to interrupt, sorry, uh, Mark. Uh, people at home, what they will be asking this morning is, if I'm applying for my passport, what impact will this strike have? What impact will it have, in your opinion? Well, in my opinion, there will be huge delays in the already 10 weeks that people are supposed to apply for passports, and there will be huge disruption on the fast-track service that people can use when they want to get a passport quicker. Now, the government says it's got contingency measures in place, so we'll see how that works out over the next few days and weeks. But I would expect there to be delays, and yet there shouldn't be a single delay. If the passport offices were given more than a 2% pay rise and given the resources they need, we would have a far better service in normal times, let alone the disruption we're going to see over this five weeks. So it would be great if people could get the government on the media today, just to ask them a simple question. Why is it that the people you clapped in the pandemic who delivered the furlough scheme, delivered 3 million claims to universal credit, delivered passports and driving licenses, kept our borders safe and our prisons running, why did you clap them in the pandemic? Now you're giving them less than any other worker in the public sector and you won't even deem yourself to take the time to get into talks. It's frankly astonishing.